Today we're reviewing version two of Bells of Steel Buzzsaw Bench, which is something I've been putting off for a while because I didn't think it offered anything over existing options. But now that they've released some attachments, things just got interesting, and it sounds like this is just the beginning. With Bells teasing even more attachments for this bench, this makes for an intriguing option because not only can we do leg extensions and leg curls, but we can also lock in for decline exercises or even Nordic curls, but they've got a lot more planned than that. But you guys that know me know I pride myself on being honest and thorough in these reviews and we're being promised a lot here. And while I think this is a solid bench with a lot of potential, I think there's also some areas on it and the attachments that could use some improvements. So that's why I want to do some comparisons so we can determine if this is the right bench for you because if you're looking for a space-saving do-it-all bench, this is an interesting option. So as always, I'll try to answer all of your questions from Instagram, but I probably won't be able to explain why it took me eight months to review this even after Winnie teased it on our Patreon. Sorry, Bells. And no, the comparisons aren't because I needed to dust some of these off to justify my bench collection. We're gonna put the buzzsaw up against the AB4100 since they're in the same price range. And then I've also included the Superbench Pro from Iron Master because Bells is trying to create a versatile ecosystem of attachments like this one has. Let's quickly cover the specs since it'll set us up so that we can talk about how well the attachments work as well as where some of my issues come in. With eight back positions, one of which is a decline, and four seat positions, it'll do enough positions to keep you happy. And although it's not a true tripod design like Reps AB4100, the front foot really hasn't bothered me much, but if you really tuck your feet during presses, you might hit it some. The bench also stores upright, whether you've added on the optional base for attachments, but to put this base on, as always, I've planned this really well, you have to remove the handle, which makes this a good time to talk about moving the bench. With the handle on, it's not bad since it weighs about 94 pounds, making it much lighter than some of these other monstrosities we own. And this is normally where we talk about and often insert a very popular clip of my wife moving a bench, but no, not today because I read a comment that questioned whether these benches were actually heavy and said, maybe we just have poor bench moving technique. So here you go, a montage of the proper technique for moving this bench with the attachments on. Yeah, it's a bitch. But listen, my wife will tell you, with me, you've gotta take the good with the bad, and I'm a bit of a bench snob and probably the most critically annoying reviewer out there, so believe me when I say, for all my complaints, this bench does a lot well. It's just that I want you to know what you're spending your money on rather than me make a lot of money on affiliate links, which makes this that awkward moment where I say this was sent for free for review and I've linked all of these items in the description. So if you enjoy our content and want to keep seeing it, it's those affiliate links that enable us to create content like this. At about 17 and a half inches tall with a 12 inch wide back, it meets IPF specs for height and width. And it's also comfortable to bench on, but that might be helped by the fact that the vinyl looks and feels a lot like Reps Gen 2 vinyl that's on the 4100, though this is probably a little bit better quality. And as you can probably see, or maybe I'm in the way and set the camera the wrong way, but the footprint of the buzzsaw is larger than the 4100. So when you combine that with the 11 gauge steel, you end up with a solid and stable bench with a 1,000 pound capacity. One of my issues with the buzzsaw is the AB4100 is $50 less and they're both imported benches, which makes me feel like this design could have been refined a little bit more. Now, yes, this is the beefier bench and Bells has kind of put their money into that aspect of it. So if you just want to lift weight like a real man, unlike me, you might not care about not having any finish options besides the black powder coat or the lack of finer touches a gentleman like myself enjoys, such as the lack of protection on the ladder. So this is going to get pretty beat up. There's also no laser cut angle markings on the ladder like this one has. So you're kind of less left guessing on the back angle and reps got the rubber feet to protect your floor. 
And overall, the 4100 features a more polished design. Granted, none of the things I just mentioned really affect performance, and the buzzsaw can do a lot more once you add this on. Which brings us to the reason most of you are here and where things get interesting, and that's with the attachments. But being a dirty YouTube reviewer, I exploited the algorithm and forced you to watch to this point. You're welcome. As I mentioned before, this base and the accessories are additional purchases, but they're also compatible with the Hero Bench. But putting things onto a bench isn't an entirely original idea, and the Super Bench Pro might be the best example of that as it takes that idea and really runs with it. And I think for someone who's looking to maximize their space, ecosystems like these can be a really good idea. And that's where Bells becomes even more interesting since they've been cranking out new equipment lately and there's no signs of them slowing down as they've already talked to me about expanding their options with this bench. But how well does it all work? Again, there's some pros and cons. I'm not sure if there's a perfect way to integrate accessories into a bench, but this almost feels like an afterthought. And I feel like I prefer a system like on the Superbench Pro where they integrate into the spine and I can fully remove them, which is the same idea as Rep's Blackwing Bench, which we'll be reviewing. So subscribe for that one because after testing it at the Arnold, I feel like that could become a very popular bench. And reps even teased attachments for it, but we may be waiting for a long time to see if those ever even come. Let's talk about the leg rollers, which lock you in well for decline work and are a pretty cheap addition if you've already got the base. The buzzsaw has only one decline angle, but it's pretty easy to adjust the height of the attachments by removing this pin and then sticking it in whatever hole feels right for you. The bench, especially with this phallic base, is very stable. And although I don't program Nordic curls into my workouts, I found it works pretty well for them because you can brace your feet against this rear roller or you can adjust the back pad angle to limit your range of motion or you can add a band onto the attachment to help you out or even onto your rack or an additional solid surface. The leg extension and leg curl accessory also performs well with some caveats. I'm just gonna sit here because, ooh, that's cold because I've been standing too long. The resistance curve is better than expected for a plate loaded machine. I mean, sure, it's gonna be a little bit easier on the bottom range of the motion, but you could add a band to level that out some and you're getting full resistance when your legs are fully extended. Now I'm gonna be a bit critical here, but these aren't issues that affect everyone, nor do they mean this is a bad option. There's a few things that can make using this a little distracting. As you add weight, your heels are gonna make contact with the base here or really the front feet and there's some play in the pivot point. I also think the pads should be a little bit wider because when you're as big as I am, there's not much space to work with. Now, most of you probably didn't notice that's not me in the last clip, but I had a lot of people ask about height with this. So I had my friend Sarth test some things out with me and we found that you're probably maxing out the height of this with extensions at least at about six foot two, especially if you're trying to use planner flexion. You can technically bring it higher by increasing the seat angle and raising the attachment, but the gap here increases and it starts becoming less stable and less comfortable to use in general. For leg curls, again, the resistance curve is pretty good, but the padding here should really be beefed up on this because as you add weight, you're applying more and more pressure to your quads, which can be uncomfortable. But I feel like maybe I'm being a bit too critical with this because when you think about the fact for $600 shipped, you're getting a flat, incline and decline bench with the ability to do leg extensions and leg curls well that's a lot less than something like titan's rack mounted option but this does a lot more making this a solid option if you're looking for a do-it-all bench sure iron masters ecosystem is more established and there are prettier benches out there but you can get a lot for your money with the buzzsaw if you enjoyed this video and want to listen to me talk about benches for three more hours, which 
Of course you do, including reviews on these two benches, then check out this playlist right here. Thanks to our Patreons, links in the description. I'll see you next week.